In yesterday's episode, we emerged victorious from the Cola Cars Arena and began to explore Nukatown, USA. There we met the slaves who are forced to run the market. We explored Cappy's Cafe, met Nira, the dysfunctional robot greeter, and Sierra Petrovita, a visitor from the Capital Wasteland. But we still need to head to Fiztop Grill to meet with Gage and find out exactly what he wants us to do. To do so, we head to the northern gate, but then we remember seeing the Nukacade on Sierra Petrovita's tour. We haven't explored this yet. Okay, we'll postpone talking to Gage for now. Let's instead head inside the Nukacade. Inside, we find the place lit with blue and pink light, and we find a man standing off to the right named Fritz. You're the new overboss, right? You sure made an example out of Coulter. Yeah. Who knew? Water and electricity wouldn't mix. Well, judging from the thirst sapper you picked up, apparently you're not the only one. And you are... Impressed. I've never seen anyone survive in cola cars for more than a minute. Are you kidding? That was a piece of cake. Well, you have to admit, you had a bit of help. Well, honestly, I had a little help. I'll say. Gage was the one that clued you in. Yeah, I know all about it. Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. I think Coulter got exactly what he deserved. So you weren't loyal to Coulter? Hell no. Coulter was a goddamn idiot. I'm getting the impression that nobody liked that guy. <laughs> That's like calling a Deathclaw a pussycat. It's not like I had a choice. I don't care why it happened. I'm just glad that it did. Good. Then you and I won't have a problem. As long as you run these gangs the way they were meant to be run, we'll never have a problem. With Coulter running the show, business was starting to dry up. Now that you're here, I'm betting everyone stands to make a lot more money. Speaking of which, I'm hoping you're here to spend a little bit of your own at the Nuka Cave. Sure, why not? This place looks like fun. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? What exactly is this place? Ah, it's my pride and joy. The one good thing that came out of getting stuck working for Coulter. I'm amazed that all this junk actually works. Thanks. It's taken me almost a year to get it this far. Maybe I'll just kill you and take whatever the hell I want. True, but that would be the stupidest decision you could ever make. Yeah, all of the amusements and games around you are working thanks to yours truly. I'm the only one that can take them apart and put them back together again. If I go, then it's only a matter of time before they fall apart. And all the cute little prizes you can win? Yeah, you can thank me for those too. Careful. You keep patting yourself on the back like that, and your arm's gonna break. Give me a break. It's all I've got. Look, let me just explain how all this works. After that, if you're interested in playing, great. If not, then no harm done. How do I get started? Eager to play, eh? <laughs> That's what I like to hear. I'll thank you when you start explaining this madhouse. All right, all right. No need to get hostile. Prizes? I like the sound of that. Well then, step right up, and I'll explain how you can win some. Every game in the Nuka Kate still takes the original pre-war tokens. Just slot one into the machine and you're off. If your score is high enough, the machine will kick out a bunch of tickets which you can redeem at a prize terminal for all sorts of goodies. How do I get tokens? Well, I usually just tell my customers that I sell them. But seeing as you're the new overboss, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you a few other ways of getting them. Damn it! I already spent all my tokens on some magic beans. Very funny. Let me guess. You just so happen to sell the tokens. Well, yes, but that's not the only way. You can also get tokens from the pre-war token machines in the Nuka Cave, but they only take pre-war money. And if you look around the parks hard enough, I'm betting you'll find a few here and there. I'll tell you what, just to officially welcome you to Nuka World, here's a token to get you started. Sounds good. Thanks. No problem. I have to keep you coming back for more, right? You can do better. How about two? Yeah, sure. I suppose it couldn't hurt. How about three? As a gift to welcome the new overboss? Sure, why not? May as well start off with you on the right foot. Oh, how about you give me three, or I'll break one of your legs. All right, don't do anything hasty. No need for violence. Well, I guess that's it. If you need anything, you just let me know. Oh, don't forget to take this with you, boss. That way you can't say I never did you any favors. <laughs> so what's your story, anyway? Me? Didn't know you were interested. Well, I've been running this place for years now. 
And to be honest, until Coulter rolled in with his, uh, I mean, your gangs, it was getting boring. They were going to kick me out of the Nuka Cave, but then I showed them that I possessed skills that would be useful to them. Fixing these machines really isn't that different than tinkering with a gun or some armor. Just make the right connections, and it all works. After a while, Coulter started considering me almost a part of the gangs. That's probably why he never slapped a collar around my neck. Hopefully, I'll have the same luck with you, boss. Anyway, enough about me. How about I fix you up with some tokens so you can get playing? What kind of prizes can I win here? Well, some of the things in the redemption system are left over from the pre-war era. However, I've added a few more, let's just say, more appropriate items for the gangs to enjoy. You can win plenty of ammunition or even some special weapons and armor that I created myself. If you're curious, go take a look at our redemption terminal. I'm betting you'll find something worth blowing your tokens on. Otherwise, I could always show you what I have for sale. I'll take a look, sure. Sure, sure. Take your time. His inventory is pretty small, though he does have a decent stash of chems and aid, and from him we can purchase Nuka Ked tokens and atomic roller balls, which do restock over time. Now to explore the Nuka Cade, we see the token dispenser he was talking about leaning against a pillar to the right. The dispenser only takes pre-war money. Upon activation, it sucks up pre-war money in our inventory and hands us three tokens. Behind the reception desk, we find a first aid on the ground, and then turning around we see a huge campy against the eastern wall. Near to this, we see heads on spikes, right next to the Nuka Cade prize terminal. Inside, we register our character's name. Here we can redeem tickets, and then spend those tickets on prizes. Fritz has the prizes organized by prize level. On prize level 1, we just find a bunch of minor scrap. Prize level 2 is also minor scrap, which seems to be arbitrarily listed as more valuable than the stuff we find on prize level 1. On prize level 3, we finally begin to find some useful stuff. We find a paddle ball for 500 tickets and a variety of flavors of Nuka Cola. This is the only place where we can find the paddle ball, and the paddle ball works as a weapon. It's an awkward, cumbersome weapon, but it is functional and it can be upgraded at a weapon workbench. It comes with a standard rubber ball, but we can upgrade it with a spiked, bladed, electrified, or fireball, and after we discover the secrets of Project Cobalt, we can upgrade this thing to have a Nuka Cola ball, a Nuka Cola Cherry Ball, or a Nuka Cola Quantum Ball. Like with the Thirst Zapper, each of these cola named upgrades give this weapon a unique feature. The Nuka Cola Ball causes the ball to emit a small explosion upon impact, and it increases damage by plus 10. The Nuka Cola Cherry Ball causes the ball to have a medium explosion upon impact, and increases damage by plus 25. And the Nuka Cola Quantum Ball gives the ball a large explosion upon impact, adding plus 50 damage to the ball. The Paddle Ball uses an ammunition called Paddle Ball String. We have to buy the Paddle Ball Strings here from the Nuka Cade, and it costs 50 tickets. Prize level 4 includes more Nuka Cola, and we start seeing some really useful stuff. We can buy missiles, combat armor, and a very rare Nuka Cola Quartz. And finally, in prize level 5, we can purchase a T-45 Helm, Mini Nukes, and Disciples Armor. Also available on this prize level is a unique weapon called the Acid Soaker, but it's not always available. The inventory of this terminal changes every now and then, so if we don't see it here, we have to wait a few days until it pops up. The Acid Soaker looks like a modified 10mm pistol, but instead of shooting 10mm rounds, it has a vial of acid, and each time we pull the trigger, we shoot our enemy with acid. The acid works like a dot damage over time poison, but it also temporarily decreases the enemy's damage resistance. It uses an ammunition called acid that we can craft at a chemistry station once we attain the acid soaker. It doesn't do a lot of damage and is really only useful for drenching an enemy at the beginning of a battle and then pulling out our regular weapon to do the real damage. In this way, we land a poison, reduce their damage resistance, making our primary weapon much more useful. The acid soaker is one of the most expensive items, costing around 6,250 tickets. Backing out of this, 
we can view the high scores. Since we are logged into our character's account here, we'll see all of our own personal high scores. We see zero here because I haven't done any of the games yet. Uh, let's see if we can rectify that. Turning right, we see a bit of a workshop. Looks like this is where Fritz is repairing some of the attractions. There's a door to the south, which leads to another section of the workshop. Here we find a weapons workbench and another star core. Behind the weapons workbench, we find a generator where we can walk away with a fusion core. But that's it, so turning around, we can explore the atomic rollers. Here we find an atomic roller ball on the ground. Let's see, can I do this? No, looks like I need practice. Turning around and crossing the hall, we can go into the hoop shot room. Let's see, can I get a shot? And again, no. But near to this is Wackakami. On the ground, we see a Kami Whacker. We can equip it and then put a token in the machine. You get the idea. This goes on for quite some time. All right, 52 tickets. The Kami Whacker can actually be used as a real weapon. It sadly, however, only has one upgrade at a weapons workbench. It can be upgraded with blades, which causes a target to bleed. Its base damage is 20, but its speed is medium, which means that it's not a very viable weapon. Heading west up the stairs, we can open an Etotronic on the wall, just moldy food inside, and then turning right, we find a bit of a firing range game. There's a Nuka token laying on here, and we see a pipe pistol, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my deliverer. <laughs> This is actually a really fun game. I had more fun with this one than any of the others. Though I probably shouldn't be wasting my precious 10 millimeter ammunition on this thing. This character doesn't have scrounger yet, so ammunition is pretty scarce. At any rate, I ended by doing pretty well. Think I missed only two or three. Woohoo! 783 tickets. I'm rolling in the dough. Heading south, we can move to the Nuka Zapper race. I showed off how this works in my video about Nordhagen Beach, but we just grab a Thirst Zapper, enter a token, and fire away. It's easy to win this one. We then have to wait for all of the others to catch up. and our reward is 225 tickets. Now that we've got plenty of tickets, we can head back down to the Nuka K prize terminal to turn this in for prizes. First, we can view our high score to see exactly how we did. Okay, all right, well, I've got nothing to compare this to, so I'm assuming that's good, aside from the atomic rollers and hoop shot, of course. And then we can exchange our tickets for prizes, but there's really nothing here that I want. So now we need to head out. On our way out, we see a cigar in the mouth of this bottle and cappy statue, which is a pretty great touch, and then some whiskey in the hands of another one. When done, we can head out the door back to Nukatown, USA. That leaves one place yet to explore, aside from the gang headquarters, here in Nukatown, USA, and that is Fiztop Grill. Heading north and through the gate, we see the mountain and the grill before us, but right in front of the mountain, we see a pool, and in the pool is an operator he appears to be searching for something. Man, this is a waste of time. If we ask him, he doesn't really elaborate. Hey. Understanding the operators ain't hard. We know how to live. The other gangs, well, dying is more their strong suit. Could he be looking for that cappy in a haystack? After all, the clue book said that it would be close to here. We see a big pile of trash on the ground under the water. And after a moment, he ends up telling us what he's after. Caps, ammo, salvage, drugs. At least some of that's gotta be hiding in here. 
All right, nothing specific. He's just rummaging through the garbage. This is good to remember though, because we often find things hidden in the trash here. Usually tickets and tokens, sometimes pre-war money, and even more precious goods. Nearby, we find a new consumable, some cotton candy bites on a food vendor stand. This restores 10 HP at the cost of three rads, which is similar to a box of sugar bombs, which heals the exact same amount, but gives us seven rads. Well, now we need to decide which way to go, left or right. We'll start by heading west. And here we find a whole bunch of overgrowth, a big gnarly tree, looks like it's been here for hundreds of years, and overgrown bushes. We see the overgrown bushes partially concealing a stroller drop-off area, and near to this, on the concrete park wall, right next to the bathroom, we find the hidden cappy. That's one. Gee. The clue book told us that this was the only one in Nukatown, USA, so now we just have to keep our eyes open when we finally explore the parks. Near to the stroller drop-off area, we see some strollers in a big pile of trash, and then turning around, we find an ammo box on a table. Heading back towards the restrooms that were right next to the hidden cappy, we see a men's and women's restroom heading into the women's first. We find two stalls, nothing in the left one, but in the right one, we find a locked toolbox called Clark's Toolbox. Locked Locked with an advanced lock. If we pick it, however, inside we find Clark's stash key, a silver pocket watch, and a message for Deke. This is an audio holotape. And opening it up in our pip boy. Hey, Deke. It's me, Clark. Now don't get pissed off. I know you were expecting to meet up with me, and instead, you found this holotape. Well, sorry, buddy, but. I just couldn't take the chance that you'd double-cross me. So, I've decided to split the goods up myself and just leave your share somewhere else. I'm gonna head west with my share, see if the Sunset folks are buying. But, uh, you might do better selling the stuff to the Vim people up in Maine. The key I've stashed with this holotape should get you into the footlocker under the bridge near the bottling plant. Good luck. From the sound of this, we get the impression that this was a pre-war park employee who was selling Nuka-Cola secrets. He mentioned Sunset in the West, well that's Sunset Sarsaparilla, and he mentioned Vim, popular in Maine. This fellow might have gotten the idea that he could sell Nuka-Cola secrets to Nuka-Cola's competitors. Inside the men's restroom, we find some jet and dirty water on a table, and a chem box on the ground next to a sleeping bag. Clark gave us pretty good instructions on where to find the stash. He mentioned a bridge near the Nuka-Cola bottling plant, and there are only a few of them. We find his stash by heading out of Nuka-Town, USA through the northern entrance. We pass Kitty Kingdom on the right, and we see a bridge to the left connecting Dry Rock Gulch to the bottling plant. But this is not the bridge we want. Instead, we keep going north until we find a bridge that connects the world of refreshment with a safari adventure. This is the most northerly bridge that spans the Nuka World River. Underneath it, we find a footlocker called Clark's Stash, and we can unlock it with his key. Inside, we find a huge stash of Nuka Cola, 10 Nuka K tokens, one quantum dark orange quartz wild and grape. My bet is that Clark and Deke thought that they could simply hand these bottles off to Nuka-Cola's competitors, Sunset Sarsaparilla and Vim, so that the competitors could reverse engineer them. However, I think this is a really foolish plan. First of all, these bottles are available publicly. You can find them at any store. It's not like Deke and Clark were offering secret Nuka-Cola recipes. They were just handing bottles of cola that you can buy at any store. The second problem is that it's really hard to reverse engineer a Nuka-Cola from the product itself. This is true in our own world. Bottles of Coca-Cola and Pepsi are available in every drugstore, but even all these years after the founding of Coca-Cola, no one knows its secret ingredients. The cola is difficult to reverse engineer, and Deacon Clark also failed to take into account the characters of the Vim and Sunset Sarsaparilla companies. We learned in Far Harbor that Vim was a really ethical company. It was a small business, and the CEO really cared about his employees. In fact, it was Nuka Cola who had an operative on Bar Harbor trying to sabotage Vim. So this entire operation was a fool's errand, and perhaps Deke thought so as well, as he never came looking for Clark, retrieved the key, or looted his footlocker. 
at any rate, back where we were in Nuka World, heading outside the bathrooms, we see a big fountain near to Fizz Top Mountain. Inside the fountain, we see a Capian bottle statue with these mascots just lounging around. Incidentally, the garbage in this fountain is a great place to forage for loot. We find a lot of tokens and tickets, some of which are completely hidden in the leaves and garbage. Just west of the fountain, we find a little diner shack. There's a Nuka Cola on the ledge outside of it, and then we can round to the northwestern side to enter. Inside, we find a shelf with two dirty water, one Nuka Cola on the top shelf, and an ammo box on the ground. Towards the northern side, we find a bed on the ground, a Nuka Cola Quantum on a shelf, more Nuka Cade tickets in the garbage, and an ammo box with 308 caliber rounds. Outside the shack, we see a bit of a slave cooking area. On a table nearby is some raw meat and a trader who doesn't want to okay, talk. Thought... Heading west, we find an explosives box on the ground, right next to a weapons workstation, and a tool case with ammunition inside. Continuing north on the western side, we see a bunch of closed off shops. We even see a baseball throwing game. The baseballs are still here, but if we try and play it, and nothing really happens. As we continue west, we head towards the exit. Here we find another big tree in the middle of the path, and cluttered around its roots is a bunch of garbage with more Nuka Cade tickets, tokens, and even a teddy bear. This is one of the primary gates we can use to explore the other parks. We see the Galaxy Zone off to the west, and the Kitty Kingdom off to the northeast. But as we haven't finished exploring Nuka Town USA, we'll turn around and head back into the park. Retracing our steps all the way back to the gate that led towards the Nuka Cade, we can instead turn east. We pass some disciples walking around, and we find more sitting at some tables to the right. Heard you put a pretty good beat down on Val. What happened? I was out of smoke since she didn't want to hook me up. Hell, in that case, she deserved it. I've done a lot worse for a cigarette. <laughs> I remember. I guess giving cigarettes to your comrades and the disciples is not optional. In this nook, we find a toolbox right next to an armor crafting bench. On a table behind it, we find some jet. And then there's a cooler with some psycho and iguana bits on the ground next to some chairs. Nearby, there's a Nuka Cola cherry. And that's it for this nook. Heading out and continuing northeast, we can loot some garbage cans and other minor containers. We see another exit off to the east. But all we see off in the distance is the monorail track. This this doesn't lead to any of the parks. Heading back inside and turning right, we begin to see big puddles and trails of blood on the ground. This path then splits off to the left or off to the right. Heading right, we see even more blood and some spatter right in front of a trough filled with blood. Continuing forward, we find another bloody trough and here we discover Fizz Top Mountain. Now this is not where we're supposed to meet Gage. We need to meet him at Fizz Top Grill, which is the restaurant at the top of the mountain. Instead, this is the headquarters of the Disciples Raider Gang. But we're not going to enter. Instead, we'll talk with them a little bit later. Just outside the main door, we see an ammo box with shotgun shells inside. And near to this is a power armor workbench. With the Disciples Nook explored, we can turn around and go down that other path to the west. This leads us right beneath Fizz Top Grill. We see it there at the top of the mountain. But we see some buildings and clutter to the left. Here we find a radio on a side table with some bobby pins and Nuka Cola, and a jar of Buff Jet on a bottom shelf. We can turn left into what I think is a boathouse. Here we find some pre-war money and a cash register, and a bunch of scrap and junk. Moving around the wall to the south, we see the dock, where we find our operator friend, still hard at work. There's a boat here, but nothing on it. So heading out, we can turn left. Here we find an ammo box on the other side of this barrel stack, and across from it, a red toolbox next to a mattress. There are some shack stairs nearby. Heading up them, we see a trail of blood. This leads to a little elevated shack. We can loot a tool case, a chem cooler underneath the table, and then a wooden crate in the southeastern corner. But this elevated shack is a dead end, so turning around and hopping down, we can turn northwest. We see a door that leads to Fizz Mountain. Off to the west, we see that path near the fountain and that tiny diner that leads out to the parks. And then directly behind us, next to a bunch of blood on the ground, is an elevator. Punching the button, the lift comes down. And then we can punch the button again to take it all the way to the top. At the top, we finally arrive at Fizz Top Grill. And here we find Gage waiting for us. Gage? Welcome home, boss. The digs are yours now. I hope you like the look. 
Coulter had some peculiar tastes. But this view is something, huh? Everything you see here is under your control, now that you're in charge. I still don't get it. Why put me in charge? You may have noticed that our former overboss, Coulter, was a f***ing asshole. And that's me being nice. Ended up being poisoned for this whole operation. The way I see it, surviving the gauntlet means you've got what it takes. Or at least the potential. For a good while now, we've needed someone who can get done. Make real progress. Sorry, pal. I don't want the job. Oh, come on. I haven't even told you about all the perks yet. If I'm really running the show now, let's get to work. Now that right there is just the kind of attitude I was hoping for. I sure do like the sound of that. I thought you might. Look, I'll be honest with you. This operation needs someone to step in and take the reins. Sure as hell ain't gonna be me. Leading outright ain't my style. And there's already some blaming me for supporting Coulter all this time. My talents are best put to use helping a new overboss get all this under control. You get me? What sort of talents would you say you have, Gage? Aside from being a good shot and having a foul mouth, I've run with gangs nearly my whole life. I know how raiders think, what they're after, and how to use that to your advantage. Trust me, I'm in this just as much as you are. This needs to work out. Oh, sure. I understand. So, are you just gonna paint the bullseye directly on my back, or what? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. It's a part of the reason you won't see me stepping up and running things. But I'm telling you, it ain't gonna be that bad. <laughs> oh, so you're a coward. I get it. No. A coward would have run for the hills when things started looking bad. That ain't me. I mean to fix what's gone wrong here. And I'm saying I need your help. Slinging insults back and forth ain't gonna get us nowhere. I hear you, Gage. Good. I know I'm throwing a lot at you all at once here. Let's take a step back and talk big picture, okay? Nuka World. This was the dream. Huge. Built like a goddamn fortress. You run this, world is yours. We had a good head start on it. A lot of work went into getting the disciples, the operators, and the pack to work together. But we got here. About a year ago, we push in through the front gate, take over Nuka Town, get these traitors under our thumb. And then, well, Coulter got lazy. He was content to sit on his ass. Never bothered putting in the effort to finish taking over the park. The gangs got restless and started pissing each other off. It was... is... A real mess. At this point, Gage has unique dialogue for the soul survivor, depending on the in-game faction that he or she chose to side with. If we haven't finished the game yet, he doesn't have any unique dialogue, but if we have... What kind of a mess am I walking into here? It was little at first. Heated tempers, arguments, the occasional shooting. Got worse over time, though. Gangs started staking out as much territory as they could all being on top of each other like this. Started looking for excuses to turn on each other. If something ain't done soon to settle things down, it's gonna reach a point there ain't no coming back from. You know, I've heard about you. In charge of the Minutemen, ain't you? No idea why you'd waste your time with those has-beens. I ain't no genius, but as far as I'm concerned, history already proved what they're after it ain't gonna work i can fix this i can make this work yeah man i sure hope so you know i've heard of you and that institute of yours some pretty shady stuff you all are up to guess i already know you're willing to do whatever it takes to get what you want though sounds like this whole thing is a waste of time nope that's bull it can work it just needs someone capable of running the show. Someone like you. You know, I think I heard of you. Some big shot with the Brotherhood of Steel, right? They ain't that different from a raider gang, you ask me. Just 
just try and act all legitimate, but they still just take what they want. Coulter couldn't pull this off? He was weak. Didn't deserve to be in charge. Tell me about it. I thought he had what it took, so I helped arrange this whole deal. Didn't work out. But now that you're here, we got a second shot. Ain't gonna lie. I've heard about you. Part of that railroad, ain't you? I don't give a damn about their little crusade, but guess I know you got some fight in you. Look, I know these gangs. Been working with them or against them for years now. I'll help you, okay? Walk you through everything. First thing you gotta do is get the gangs behind you. Without them supporting you, you're not getting done. You don't have to trust them. Hell, you don't even have to like them. But you need them to respect you enough to follow you. Have any advice for how I should go about it? Yeah, all right. The disciples like violence. The bloodier, the better. Tell them they'll get plenty of it. The operators are in it mostly for the money. They get promised caps, they'll listen to you. The pack, hell, I don't know. They follow whoever they think is the strongest. Show some teeth, I guess. I don't need them. I get by just fine on my own. Oh my god, shut up with this. I'm telling you, you need their help. They'll listen, if they're all afraid of me. Okay, settle down. Most of these psychos have seen that it'd scare your nightmares. They're not gonna be that easy to intimidate. Don't worry. Everybody likes me. Yeah, I wouldn't count on that. Look, technically, you're already the new overboss, right? That's like half the work done right there. Just meet the leaders. Talk with them. Flex your muscles a little. Show them you mean business. What happens after they're on my side? Then, we get started on taking over the rest of Nuka World. But, one step at a time. You in? I need some time to think it over, Gage. Okay, okay. Just don't take too long, all right? I'll do my best to hold things together, but don't leave me hanging here. The gangs expect results, and they ain't gonna wait forever. Over, boss. I've got enough going on. I don't need this hassle. Are you screwing with me? Come on. This is the opportunity of a lifetime here. I wouldn't steer you wrong. Okay. Let's do this. All right. That's what I'm talking about. You just need to show them you're the right woman for the job. I'll be here if you need me. You are the overboss after all. Just don't screw this up. Aren't you raiders all the same? Hey, come on now. No need to be insulting. Commonwealth gangs. Well, most of them don't even qualify. They ain't organized. They don't make smart decisions. Basically one step up from rabbit animals. I've run with some of them over the years. Every single time, they either think way too small or get themselves wiped out. I make a point of getting the hell out of Dodge before that happens. I don't get it, Gage. What's the appeal of all this? Oh, come on. It ain't that hard to see. You take whatever you want from whoever you want. Anybody has a problem with that, you cut them down. You telling me that doesn't sound like even just a little bit of fun to you? They just need a good leader. Well, that's the difference. Gangs out here, they've got leaders. They're better organized. You ask me, raiders are all stupid. You might want to watch how loudly you say like that. Most of them are, no question. But don't go thinking we're all the same. Good way to get yourself killed. Sounds like you've been through a lot, Gage. Anybody who survives to this age, yeah. Anyway, don't mistake the gangs out here for being the same as those Commonwealth saps. Gangs out here, they got agendas, and they're gonna expect results. You can't afford to forget that. I want to know more about Nuka World. Yeah, good call. Big time amusement park back before the world went to... Well, I guess if this place is any indication, it wasn't so hot before it all blew up. Anyway... We weren't the first to think of this place as a good stronghold. Before we got here, a bunch of traders had set up shop and hired a whole lot of guns to protect them. They were dug in like ticks. That's why it took 
pulling a bunch of gangs together to even have a chance. You've got this area of the park. Isn't that enough? Why do you want more? You got a lot to learn, boss. No question that it's a good location. Yeah, the traders thought it'd make a good hub, pulling in buyers from all around. We're thinking it makes a good central location for sending gangs out. You must have lost a lot of men just getting this far. They knew the risk going in, and hell, they were all probably gonna die anyway. Pulling the gangs together was a smart move. Thanks. I'll take credit for that one. Coulter did the heavy lifting, but it was my idea. So we've got Nuka Town, and most of the traders work for us now. They ain't happy about it, but screw them. We really need the rest of these parks, though. Every one of them not under our control is a threat. And the gangs are too cramped up. They're stepping all over each other. Unless they get room to spread out, there's gonna be bloodshed. So the sooner you get them all to agree to follow orders, the sooner we can improve our situation. Tell me more about the gangs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, quite the assorted bunch. All used to hate each other, and I guess maybe they still do to a degree. Took a load of work to get them all on board with this idea, so I really don't want to lose them now. And if I were you, I'd start with the disciples. They might all be crazy, probably are in fact, but Nisha has her reasonable moments. Then you've got the operators. Spoiled, rich kids, but doesn't mean they ain't ruthless killers. If you can impress Mags, she'll listen to you. And then there's the pack. I'm not saying they're savages, but well, they're savages. I don't know how Mason keeps them on a leash. Up to you who you want to trust the most, but you're gonna need to trust at least some of them. You need anything else? Nothing else for now. All right. You know where to find me. So, we need to meet the leaders of each of the raider gangs and somehow impress them, or at least convince them to keep the peace. But first, we can inspect our new player home. We see an elevated platform and bed in the northeastern corner. There's a suitcase on the ground and then an overboss trunk, but this is empty. But it won't be empty for long. This will become important later. Near to this is a cabinet where he's been stashing some chems and cigarettes. We get a rat away and a rat axe. And then on a nightstand next to his bed, now our bed, is a fusion core and some bobby pins. Now that the bed is ours, we can rest here and get the well-rested perk. And on the western side of the bed, we find an expert locked safe with some nice. chems and ammunition inside. He also has a duffel bag on the ground next to some steps with some ammunition, a frag grenade, and a hardened sniper rifle. Down the stairs and turning around the corner, we find an office desk with some psycho on top. And here is his power armor station. But as I'm on my sneak, Sneaky stealth assassin. I probably won't be using this very much. Heading west, we can turn into the bar. We see lots of bottles and tins of meat. Behind the bar, we find a Nuka-Cola grape next to some purified water. There's a chem box on the eastern side. And then turning around and facing south, we find some Mentats and a Nuka-Cola Quantum on the shelf. Facing west, we can pass a chemistry station. Sadly, none of these workbenches are connected, so they don't share resources. We can move to the windows where we find some jet on a handcart and then another kitchen or pantry off to the west. On the top, we find a cooler with some chems and Nuka-Cola and meat inside and a chem box behind the counter filled with Mentats. There's a Nuka cherry and a cola on a nearby shelf and a Nuka-Cola dark by the kitchen sink. That's it for the patio. We can now open the big blue doors to the north to enter Fizz Mountain. Inside, we go down a long hallway to enter Coulter's more private quarters. On a table in the middle of the room next to a red toolbox, we find Coulter's terminal. And this reveals a lot about Coulter's mental state. If you ain't Coulter, you're dead. This terminal is for all of Coulter's important personal overboss stuff. Keep your hands off. In the first item, we find his to-do list. Shake down traitors, make fun of Mason, check on power armor, count caps. Okay, quite a list there. Makes me wonder why he even bothered to make one. Backing out of this, we find messages from Gage. In the first one, we made it. Terminal is all set up in your quarters. Guys should be hauling in the rest of the furniture you asked for. We've done real good, man. Got farther than I thought we would, to be honest. Once we've got the gang settled and everyone's healed up, we need to start coming up with a plan for the rest of the parks. I think it's clear that from the very beginning, Gage was truly the brains of this operation. Gage was the puppeteer, and Coulter, the puppet. In the next one, Need to Move, 
Hey boss, I've had visits from two of the gangs in the last day. They're not happy, man. Wondering why it's been three weeks and we ain't made moves on the rest of the parks. I gave them some small jobs to do. Should keep them busy for a while, but we really need to get a plan together. Set up a to-do list on your terminal like you asked for. Still not sure why you need it. Stuff around here is real simple. I guess with a to-do list, Coulter could at least fool himself into thinking that he's accomplishing things each day, even if all he's doing is tinkering with his power armor. In the next one, we gotta talk. Look, we gotta do something. Three months and no progress. This don't look good for you or for me. They're scared of you still like they should be, so you ain't hearing the talk, but I'm telling you, the gangs want some action. You need to stop screwing around and sit down with me, okay? Gage made a risky gamble putting Coulter in charge and it looks like it backfired on him. A puppeteer is only powerful if his puppet obeys. By putting faith in a worthless guy like Coulter, Gage put his own reputation at risk. In the next one, deleted, deleted. Why did he delete this message? We don't know, but in the next one we get an idea. Next step. You deleted my last message, didn't you? I'm glad we had a chance to talk. I was able to smooth things over with the gangs and let them know that you've got a plan. Now you just gotta make sure you tell everyone. Hold a big meeting. Pull everyone in that ain't on guard duty. Show off. These guys are suckers for that stuff. In the next one, Gauntlet? Coulter, man, what the heck? I can't even find you. Where the heck have you been? What's this gauntlet thing that disciples are working on? I don't care how excited they are, this wasn't the plan. We didn't spend half a year here just to waste our time on this crap. Six months, still no parks, still no power. In the next one, this is serious. I can't keep covering for you. The gangs are already bored of this gauntlet of yours. New business ain't coming in, and we're not doing anything to expand. Guys can't even step foot in most of the parks without getting killed, and no one can get a word in with you because you're always tinkering with your doggone power armor. The gangs have all been demanding to see you. I finally got them all to agree to a meeting, which I will have to hold because you aren't around. You see, this is the fundamental problem with putting the strongest man in the room in charge. Not everyone who's good in battle is a good leader. Gosh, what's wrong with this guy? I can understand being a strong man who's good at fighting but not necessarily good at leadership, but you've got the perfect lieutenant in Gage standing right here coming up with all the plans, telling you exactly what to do. All Coulter had to do was say yes Gage and show up to a meeting or two and he would have satisfied the gangs, given them all the illusion that he was still the man in control and he'd probably be alive today. And in the last one, all good. Hey boss, work things out with the gangs. It'll be just fine. Nisha says they've improved the gauntlet again. Sounds like it should be real interesting. Hope we get a real good show out of it. Have fun, boss. <laughs> and this is the moment that Gage gives up on Coulter and plans his assassination. <laughs> Despite how reasonable Gage is, and he clearly is the most reasonable raider here, he's still a devious raider. Backing out of the terminal, we can continue to explore. We'll start by heading south. We see two first aid kits on the wall, only one has anything in it. Some lockers with one piece of jet inside. There's a hallway leading to an elevator, but we'll tackle this in a minute. Yes, there is a workshop here, but that's only because I have a mod installed. Sadly, this player home does not have a workshop, and none of the workstations are connected without mods. But if you're interested in turning this into a functional player home, I list the mod that I used in the description below. There are two doors to the north. Each leads to a bathroom. Looks like Coulter was playing with mannequins in here. In the first one, we find Kims in the mirror. In the second one, we find Kims in the mirror. And then turning east, we can head up a short step to find another bed. Guess he slept in here when it was raining and cold outside. At the foot of the bed, we find a novice locked floor safe with ammunition and pre-war money inside. And then turning around, we find another power armor station right next to a weapons workbench. There's an armor workbench against the wall to the south, and going through the southeastern door leads us to a kitchen. Here we find a chemistry station and some dishes and cutlery laid out on the counter. There's a cooking station right next to an empty refrigerator, and then opening a red door to the east leads to the pantry. Here we find two ammo crates on a shelf to the right, a selection of jet in the middle shelf, and then two duffel bags filled with tons of pre-war money. This will be useful for buying tokens. Turning left, we find a duffel bag with some ammunition and a combat rifle, and then finally a metal box with nothing much inside. And that's it for our new player home. 
To leave, we can head south and push the button for the elevator. Stepping inside, we don't see a hatch at the top, but once on the ground floor, we find a reception lobby. There's a broken Coca-Cola machine to the left, nothing inside, and then a receptionist desk to the east. There's a cooler on the ground beneath it, some bottle caps and Nuka Cade tickets on top, and on the ground beneath it to the west, we find a Nuka Cola victory. That's it for the lobby, so to leave, we head out the big red doors to the south. This brings us outside those big blue doors to Fizz Mountain that we saw right across from the elevator. So that's two ways to reach our player home. Now, we need to meet with the Raider bosses. And Gage recommended that we start with the Disciples, who are right next door. In my next video, we'll explore the Disciples' lair inside Fizztop Mountain. We'll talk with their bosses, do their Radiant quests, and explore every nook of their horrifying headquarters. I publish many new videos every single week, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have completely unique shirts in my shirt shop that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of both men's and women's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. They also come on other products, smartphone cases, mugs, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with Episode 4. Hey there. So, you're Gage's little...